Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So this is a follow-up video for the power supply video. I had some people call me up asking what caps I should get and stuff like that. So, and about some other stuff. So, I'm going to show the caps I like to use and give some info on capacitors in general. So this is a general electric capacitor, no PCBs. They use this in broadcast transmitters, like the broadcast PAs. Uh, all all over the world for years. This one's 5 kV DC, 33 microfarads. I bought out a gentleman who is a broadcast engineer who serviced transmitters, and he had a whole mess of these along with puns, and he had a whole warehouse full of stuff. He um, would convert a lot of them from three phase to single phase, so he needed different capacitors. That's what he said he had them for. So this is brand new, has some rust, surface rust on it from sitting in my basement. Um, it's hard to find good capacitors nowadays. Go on some of the surplus sites, look to see what these cost. Look this up. Go on the main surplus place in uh, Nebraska, 33 microfarad, 5 kV. See what this costs for a used one. This is new. Okay, so this is a capacitor. This is one I used to use. I used to buy them from my buddy Ted over at Henry Radio. Awesome guy, great company. I still refer a lot of people to him, and I still buy some stuff from him, like tubes and stuff sometimes. So this is a 7.5 kV 16 microfarad, and that's 7.5 kV test. That's not the working voltage rating. This is 5 kV working voltage. This is 7.5 kV test. So right, right here on a completed listing on line says right here, please note that this part is not recommended for use in power supplies with plate voltage above 6,500 volts DC working volts. It says right here, it says 60 microfarads, 7,500 volts DC test voltage. Good cap, but it is what it is. So I wouldn't run more than 5,500 on it. That's me. I like to have about 1,000 volts of headroom. I've seen the insulator blow off. I've seen them short internally, but that's because they're being abused. They're at 7 kV or more, and they're just being abused. So that's me. Do what you want, but you can isolate it from ground. You know, because remember, the case, when it's tied to ground, the case is now grounded. So you can flash the case internally, and then it can flash from here to here, and then, you know, ceramic blows apart. So, you know, with this cap, I've run no more than 4,000 volts on it. Then you have people that will have a 5,000 volt cap and then they run 1,000 or maybe 2,000 volts on it. You have to think of a cap like a battery. You know, if you try to charge a car battery at a voltage too low, it won't charge. You know, so same with a cap. So this is rated for 33 microfarads. If the voltage you're putting across it is too low, you're not going to charge it up to the full 33 microfarads. You'd have to derate it. I've also seen a lot of people where they have an inferior transformer. It's hard to find a good transformer nowadays, but let's say you you know have one from you know someone making them today, and you know a good way to test if it's a good transformer or not is put your ohmmeter across the secondary. If it has a high secondary resistance, then it's going to be a spongy transformer. So a lot of times, what people do is they'll use a massive capacitor with a lot of total capacitance thinking that'll take care of the problem. That is either the transformer, if they have a uh, credit transformer, or they have saggy line voltage. By doing that, now you have a ton of energy stored and whatever's arcing will just blow apart. You know, you could put a resistor in series with the rectified B positive, but a lot of times people don't use the right resistor. It's either too low of a value the, uh, the impedance, impedance value is too low, the wattage value is too low, it'll either just not offer enough protection or the resistor just blows apart. You know, the higher the resistance, the more wattage it's going to dissipate under normal operating conditions or in, and even more if there's a fault. So as you go up in voltage, you want to increase the resistance value. I wouldn't go above 50, but you know, if you had a 2 amp supply, 50 ohm resistor that resistor is going to dissipate a bunch of power so they get big and you want to have the proper type resistor that can handle a massive amount of power for short periods of time something like a glow bar like a canthal resistor 
I've also used those Ohmite core rib resistors. But make sure they're insulated from ground. You can see that in the power supply video. So, another thing. I've heard people mention seeing oil fill caps leak. They usually leak between the ceramic and the ground because there's a seal there. That has to do with the ripple current rating. I've never seen a true broadcast cap leak, ever. You know, think about it. There's no pressure relief. You have oil in here. So that oil gets hot, where is it gonna go? It's gonna come out the easiest way possible through the seal. So, okay, moving on. You never, ever, ever want to fuse the B negative side. If you have the B negative floating, it should never be totally floating. You always want to have the safety diodes between the B negative and the chassis. I like to put them in the RF deck and the power supply if I'm running the B negative separate up to the RF deck. So the B negative is always connected to ground, but it's not directly connected to ground. And then if you ever have a short in the B positive, it'll clamp the voltage to ground. And if worst case scenario, diode shorts brings the B negative to ground. You never want the B negative totally open from ground because that would run it that would turn into a dangerous situation. You end up with the full potential of the plate in the B negative, and you know, you just the safety hazard, you can end up dying. You just never ever ever fuse the B negative. And it's not a good idea to put the series glitch resistor on the B negative if you know if it were to open up once again. Dangerous situation. So Hopefully that answers some of the questions. And uh, someone else was saying something about sockets or something. They were asking, this is a, to a diff uh, totally separate subject. But this is what a socket looks like for a 3000 tube. There are people that sell collar thingies that slip over the tube stem. That's not a socket. This is a socket, one type of socket. Tube pushes into this. The other collar type you have to force it on and then they put the tube through the hole and they use like a washer to hold on to the lip this is a socket that's not a socket guy in california had an amplifier company great guy i think he closed his doors he used to sell sockets type they use in the henry ak ultra and the henry rf generators but it was about 400 bucks so sockets about 400 bucks those collar things about 20 bucks so these caps are i think like 200 if you call Henry direct, I think they're like 200 bucks. Cap like this, you're looking at five, 600 bucks. Yeah, if you go on one of the sites, one of, like a, if you buy it from a commercial entity that sells electronic components, you know, those are used. This is new, brand, 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 brand new. You always want to put a wire across the ca a capacitor that's in storage, because believe it or not, they can actually charge up from the static electricity in the air. One time, I had a 40 microfarad, one of those Russian ones, 40 microfarad, 5 kV pulse caps. Uh, and uh, it was at a guy's house. Uh, I was buying a bunch of parts and stuff. He had it above his garage. And I picked the cap up from the side and I touched the terminals to a piece of metal. And boom, just major spark. You know, I charged up from the static electricity in the air. And that, that may have killed me if I had touched it. So, but... Super busy with work here, waiting on a tube for that. That one's done. But uh, if you have any questions, feel free to call. 203-892-4119. That's ampreparguide.com.